All right, so yesterday I got the bootloader and the startup delay fixed to where the Mega itself will start running code very, very quickly. It was previously 900 plus milliseconds and um, I got it down to like 15 milliseconds or something. Uh, there was a second part to that though, which was actually LIBCM's firmware that you know was running before needed to be able to handle this this initial state. So previously, LIBCM when it first turned on just said, "Hey, look, the key's off. I just I know that." And so I've ended up having to change um, a Boolean state handler to uh, have four different states, uh, which is an uninitialized state and then a key on state, a key off state. And then I also had to add a key off for the first time state, uh, which basically means if the key has been on and then it measures the key being off, it doesn't immediately handle that key off event. It needs to measure it twice in a row uh, before it will actually handle the key off event. That was a, an initial condition thing that, um, actually it could be something that is uh, affecting our beta testers. Sometimes people are saying that there's a P1648 issue. I think that will fix that. The issue is ultimately that I'm low pass filtering the key on signal that th the way LIBCM determines that the key is on. It's pin 13 on the Arduino here. Uh, and it actually, because it's low pass, it takes about 20 milliseconds to turn on. And so if LIBCM looks and, and it hasn't crossed the threshold, the VIH min threshold yet, like, what was it, 3.6 volts or whatever, uh, then it will say, hey, the key's off, and it will uh, not send data. It'll basically handle its shutdown routine, which actually takes about a second to do. Uh, so anyway, that might fix that issue. Uh, it, that's not the reason I did it, though. I needed to be able to um, handle a startup condition. So anyway, I've got this all set up. LIBCM is completely unpowered. So this is in the state of uh, you just turned the IMA switch on for the first time. And I've got a bunch of signals over here, which we'll see when I turn the switch on. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn the key on and everything is happy. Um, so you'll see that we don't get any P1648 code, which is the code we got before. Uh, you will eventually get ABS not whatever, that, that doesn't matter. We're not getting any codes that actually matter. In the car, you won't get that error. And you can see just how quickly this code is running. So uh, the yellow line here is LED1, which turns on at the end of the first time through the loop. So you can see, if we look at this data here, um, we run that loop very, very quickly. So I'll post a picture of this too, probably, but just wanted to kind of talk about it a little bit. So uh, the, the dark blue line is the 12 volt key on signal. So this is basically when you turn the key on. It's not quite that, it's actually a relay that clicks, but um, the five volts is generated by LIBCM on the board. Um, and Let's see, P13, pin 13 is the actual key on. You can actually, this is how LIBCM is sensing whether or not the key is on. This is basically a voltage divider that divides that 12 volt signal down to about five volts or whatever. Um, I think it's 15 volts divided by three. I think it's a, I think it's a divide by three. Uh, anyway, you can see that this should be tracking the key ideally, but because it has an L, a low pass filter, it doesn't actually do that. Now this little, uh, pause right here is because LIBCM is not initially on and so the 5 volt rail you can see the 5 volt rail happens later the 12 volts happens first we can zoom in a little bit um, the 12 volts in the car happens first this is would be the sense lead for LIBCM but LIBCM isn't on yet because the 5 volt rail has not started to turn on yet and so this is actually a diode drop inside the uh, Mega, the Arduino Mega. So we're getting up to 0.7 volts and then we're actually waiting here until the 0.5 volt rail starts to charge. As soon as the 0.5 volt rail starts to charge, the Mega is powered correctly. Uh, beforehand, pin 13 is the only thing powering the Mega. And you can see that we start to rise up. So that this is that's why we see this little disconnect here. It's not Miller capacitance or anything. It's just, it's just a diode drop because we're 
driving through the ESD protection on pin 13. That's what's trying to power the Mega. Um, and you can see here that um, the Mega's four millisecond startup delay is uh, it's happening about two, four here. So this is the first time the code can run. It takes about two milliseconds to do all of the setup stuff. And so this would be right here the first time that we would sample this pin. And you can see that this pin is only at one, two, maybe three volts. So that's below the VIH min. So we actually wait another 10 milliseconds, which is way the heck over there, two, four, six, eight, ten. And I guess it's a little bit earlier than that. And uh, yeah, I don't know why that is. And so here is where we actually start running our loop. Anyway, all is happy. Um, anyway, it is working well. And it was a lot of work to do. So I spent yesterday doing the first part of it and uh, didn't actually get too much LIBCM work done today. Uh, I was playing around with a 3000 watt sign inverter that I picked up for free. So I had, to, I had to play around with that. Someone just posted it on Reddit and I had to take it apart. Uh, anyway, that's LIBCM today. Um, it can now boot uh, fast enough to where you shouldn't get P1648 and it can now turn itself off whenever it wants and whenever you hit the key on the next time, it, it will be able to handle that. Um, so here you can see just the, just the warm boot this already worked before, but it still works now. Um, yeah, so that is really exciting to get that done because it means that our battery life in the car, if, if your pack is charged when you park it, it's going to be like three years or so. Um, and the reason it's not infinity uh, is one, of course, batteries self-discharge, but two, the uh, offline DC-DC converter here, uh, which is powered by the actual battery pack, whether or not the contactor is on, this is always on. And this is taking our 170, 180 volt pack voltage and it's generating a 12 volt output. Now when LIBCM turns itself off, it's turning off this 12 to five volt power supply right here. And when this power supply turns off, there is no load on that. And this guy has a hiccup mode when there's no load to where the, synch the synchronous buck transformer on here turns off. And so there's basically a threshold comparator inside of this device. And that threshold comparator, if the voltage drops to say 11.5 volts, then it will turn back on. And otherwise the, the logic does not run at all. So all that is to say, this actually pulls about, uh, I think it's 25 micro watts all of the time. And uh, whatever the number is, I forget, uh, if you take the 800 or so watt hours of this battery and you divide it by whatever that is, the answer is like 38 months or something. It's a very long time. Um, the self-discharge of lithium is going to be faster than that. So realistically, you're looking at being able to leave your car at the airport parking lot situation for, you know, a year, maybe two years. Um, and after that, this is going to just, can, this can actually drain your lithium battery all the way. Now, eventually when LIBCM turns on, if the pack voltages are too low, uh, LIBCM is not going to let you charge that. It's going to send uh, P codes to the um, uh, pack, uh, to, to the MCM, and uh, it's going to prevent you from trying to charge dead lithium. And by dead lithium, I mean like, you know, zero volt lithium. Uh, so anywho, that is done. And that means tomorrow I'm going to start laying out the Rev C PCB, which I've been wanting to start that now for a few days. Um, my schedule I posted yesterday, uh, got it printed out here. And I think I'll be able to, to do the Rev C. It's only, it's September 15th right now. That gives me the 16th, 17th, 18th, and the 19th to, uh, to do the Rev C changes. Now on the Rev C PCB, I'm not gonna make any changes that are risky. I'm only making changes that are very, very well tested and therefore Rev C PCB should be the final PCB. Rev C, you know, I wish we'd ship the Rev B, whatever, we have a lot of changes. Um, anywho, that is the state of LIBCM mid-September. 
Uh, it's working real well. Um, so, anywho, yep, thanks for watching as always.